can't make this Hello guys, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Indiana Sports Connection where we talk about the Indiana Hoosiers basketball team and the Indianapolis Colts nearly every day. Let's talk about what happened in the Indiana game yesterday. It was awful to watch. Don't get too... Uh, don't take this game too seriously too quick because there are really no teams in the Big Ten that play like how that Auburn team plays. We're going to talk about all that and more on this episode. But first, let's thank our sponsor, Reynolds Wrap. For 75 years, Reynolds Wrap helping save you time in the kitchen. Pick up Reynolds Wrap in your grocer's aisle in the easy open box. It's easier to find. It has find that has this pink strip on the bottom, so it's easier to find in your aisle. Save time during halftime of the big game this Sunday. Get back to the Colts faster after halftime by using Reynolds Wrap. Make freezer bags, line sheet pans with Reynolds Wrap, cover your grill with it. Make clean up a cinch by using Reynolds Wrap and just wad this stuff up, throw it in the trash can. Thank you to Reynolds Wrap for sponsoring this video. So the Indiana Hoosiers yesterday played the Auburn Tigers in a neutral site game in Atlanta. I don't know if, uh, if Woodson just wanted to play a game in Atlanta to show off to his old friends that he's the coach of Indiana because that's what it looked like. Indiana did not even show up to this game whatsoever. It was just awful, awful to watch. So some of Indiana's weaknesses, the really glaring weaknesses for Indiana is that we don't have guards that can shoot. We don't have guys that can shoot from the outside like a team like Auburn can. Their style, they just had a downhill style that they played fast, they full court pressed Indiana nearly the the entire game. They they pressed and they really sped Indiana up. And the the hard thing about this game to watch is Indiana came out and hit four three pointers right off the bat. Got out to like a twenty to ten lead. I think it was twenty three thirteen there for a little bit, and then Indiana just came completely unraveled. Auburn just took the ball right to the rack nearly every single time. And when they drove it in, there were wide open guys for three pointers. They hit some threes later in the game. Auburn did shoot close to 50% on three pointers. I think it was like 46% at the end. At the beginning of the game, Auburn missed a lot of their three pointers. So it was all kind of fool's gold. Indiana gets out to a lead. They just, Gabe Cups, and I, I'm really not even going to say that, you know, Xavier Johnson would have helped them in this game because it would have been the same result. It all is just a style of play. No teams in the Big Ten play this way. If a team like Auburn was in the Big Ten, and they're not even ranked, that's the crazy thing. It just shows, like, how style differences in play can make a big difference. Indiana plays a real, like, plotting type style they move the ball like bring the ball up the court kind of slow then they'll pass the ball around the perimeter then they get the ball into renew or wear with about 15 seconds on the shot clock i'd say that's just about how indiana plays uh, almost every possession uh, auburn is able to take that away i mean kalel Ware, he was able to score i think he had like 15 points but he was like two of eight from the field so really when you're shooting point blank range shots and you're two of eight you're not doing very good i mean he went to the line and got some free throws there but overall indiana can't really shoot from the outside they've shown that this year I don't know if Indiana, I know Mike Woodson said he was going to recruit different types of players and that Trace Jackson Davis and, and Race Thompson, how these guys play, you know, he was just handed these guys when he first got here and he made the best out of it. Now he's had a time where he went out and recruited guys, but he really didn't recruit a bunch of great guards. Now he did get like Xavier Johnson a couple years ago to transfer from Pitt over to Indiana and Gabe Cups did come up but I don't see it. I just don't see the guard play for Indiana. Um, Galloway, I mean, between Galloway, Cups, 
there's just not a lot of answers on this team. Galloway doesn't shoot the ball from the outside very often. And when he does, he doesn't look very comfortable. I don't understand that. Like, how's a guy that's he's a senior on this team this year? How's he wide open as a guard for a three point shot? And he like is timid or does, looks like he doesn't want to take the shot. I mean, I was just watching this. Uh, thing with Todd Leary this post game show with him which he was one of my favorite players but uh, like here was an incredible thing that they brought up on there five of Indiana's top 10 three point shooters or is in the top 15 cuz but this just goes to show how great of shooters we had in Indiana back in those days was like Todd Leary was on the list at like number 11, the 11th best uh, three-point shooter in Indiana history. On those teams back then, like Damon Bailey was a great shooter. Brian Evans was a great shooter. Practically everybody could shoot. I mean, even Allen Henderson had a really good like mid-range game shooting the ball. And guys looked comfortable. Guys looked like they worked on their shooting we don't see that on Indiana now. I, I just don't know where they got really go. Um, it kind of like you get to this point of the year, and yeah, we're like about 10 games in, and you watch these guys play, and it's like, you know, nobody's coming to their rescue. Um, where, where no good guard is going to walk through that door. Hood Shafino, you know, losing him definitely hurt our guard play big time because he was a kind of talent that, that we just had not seen go through uh indiana in a while and he won us some big games i mean that shows the difference right there when he what he did to purdue last year if you can have a guard or two that can do that and really dismantle a team and it'll make uh, as soon as we can get guys that can shoot from the outside it makes everything easier your inside game's easier everything's easier if you can have some guys that can make shots from the outside they're not confident shooting the ball. Every team we play so far, they're all shooting like 30 to 43 pointers a game. Like this game against Auburn, there's no chance we win this game. They hit 19 threes and we hit six. We hit four threes in the first few minutes of that game. And we only hit six in the entire game. And they hit 19. Uh, it's just, that's 13 points. That's just 13 points right off the top that you're saying they start the game 13 points ahead because they hit 13 more threes than we did. I don't know what Indiana does. We're going to look, this is not like we got beat 104 to 76 by Auburn and they're in the sec. They're not even ranked in the sec. The great thing is we're not going to play any of those teams in a couple weeks. Like we play Kansas next week and then we play some rinky dink schools and then we'll be right into playing teams like the team we saw last week, Michigan, they were just played like Indiana did. They they were trying to get the ball inside. Um, and same with Maryland when we beat them. So it's not all doom and gloom for Indiana. But one thing why this does feel like doom and gloom, the teams that go far in the tournament are the teams that play like Auburn played yesterday. Indiana would beat that team one out of 10 times playing the style that, and they almost have to play like a perfect game to beat a team like that. But once you get in the NCAA tournament, those are the teams you're going to play. We saw like last year when we went up against a Miami and they have better guards and they, they really even had better inside play inside rebounding than we had. Those are the kind of teams you have to beat in the tournament to make it to the sweet 16 and and it's just clear like our indiana teams we can get into the tournament we can get in we've proven that with these teams but we're going to go nowhere playing this style of game we got to go out there and we got to recruit some better guards i don't know what mike woodson i don't know if at some point he will reveal like how long he wants to coach in indiana but i for one think that indiana needs to get um dusty may from fau to be the like long-term coach at indiana i think we really do need a long-term guy that's going to come in and do the like the things that bob knight did back when he came in in 71 and that's just kind of bring in a younger guy that's going to implement more of a system 
that we can have that system in place and things going forward. I mean, Matt Painter's done it at Purdue. It's definitely possible. Um, and Purdue will get beat. A lot of Big Ten teams will get beat just like that by a team like Auburn that's playing like that. These guys were hard, hard-nosed players that were hard to handle. And we looked like a JV team. We, we just looked a step behind them at every point of the game. I'm not trying to get too doom and gloom here, Indiana fans, because we definitely will have our chances to be at the top of the Big Ten this year. I do think that's still a big possibility because the Big Ten is really weak this year, and it's still a big possibility IU gets ranked or that they will end up at the top of the Big Ten and get into the NCAA but we see right here from playing a game like this how far we really have to go to be able to beat teams like this that will play this style of basketball in the tournament. That's all I have for you today. Subscribe to Indiana Sports Connection. I do have some giveaways coming up on the channel. At 100 subscribers, I'll give away an Indiana jersey or a Colts jersey. So be looking out for that. This is a new channel I started. This is a fan's perspective. Until next time, stay classy out there, Hoosier and Colts fans.